In this Lesson 2 video, I will introduce you to virtual switches in Hyper-V, and we'll also, as an example, configure switches for use in our lab environment. So in this video, we're going to discuss virtual switch manager and creating virtual switches. Basically what this allows us to do is as we create virtual machines, we're going to be able to essentially create a network interface for those virtual machines that allows them to do communications either between the physical machine, between its own machine in the network, and between other virtual machines. So here are the three types of virtual switches we can create. An external switch, as it says, creates a virtual switch that binds the physical network adapter, now this could be wired or wireless, so that the virtual machines can access a physical network. So if I want my machines to be able to go out to the internet, for example, to get updates, which I do, I need to create an external switch. It'll bind it with either the physical wireless card on my host machine, in this case a Dell XPS, or it'll bind it with other network interface cards that I might have. Let's quickly look at the other options. Internal creates a virtual switch that can be used only by the virtual machines that run on this physical computer and between the virtual machines and the physical computer. An internal virtual switch does not provide connectivity to a physical network connection. So consequently, this one's going to allow it to communicate. So if I wanted to share files between the host and the virtual machine, I would be able to do that but it's not, like it said, going to connect to a physical network. Finally, there's the private switch. This one creates a virtual switch that can be used only by the virtual machines that run on the physical net, uh, computer. In this case, I'm creating a lab environment, so I'm going to create a private switch as well. So here's what I like to do. I'm going to come in here and, first of all, create an external switch. This is the first switch that I'm going to use on the computer. So I like to say that it is a V switch. It is external. Okay. And this will let me know that it connects both to the physical machine. And then if you wanted to make a note, it's going to be the connection out to the internet. Okay. So as you can see here, I have some adapters that I can choose from. This is a USB Ethernet adapter. This is the one I want to use. It's the fastest portion of my network. I could have it connect with the wireless you know, or a tap. So in this case, I'm going to choose that. Uh, I would give it a definition, a description. Always a good idea. I'm going to pause while I put that. So I'm huge in documentation, even at this level. So you can see on my notes, I said this is a virtual switch used by Hyper-V to connect my virtual machines to the physical host. So that's going to be the physical computer that Hyper-V is running on so that it may access the internet through the use of the physical network adapters on the host. So at this point, I'll say apply. And the pending changes may affect, well, I don't have anything that it's going to affect. So it'll go ahead and apply those changes and create that virtual switch. Now at this point, while we're in here, I'm also going to create a private switch. This is a switch that will allow the virtual machines to communicate amongst themselves because what I want to do is create essentially a separate network so that those machines can communicate with each other that also keeps it off my network segment in case I'm in an Active Directory production environment I don't want DHCP, DHCP and other things disrupting my production network so I'll show you that in future videos so let's go create that private switch. I'll say OK here. I'll just come back in the virtual switch manager. In this case, I'm going to do that private switch and create the switch. Now again, I'm going to come up here. I'm going to call it a V switch so that I know it's the virtual switch. This is going to be private and this is going to be VM for virtual machine use only. So through this switch, it's not going to be able to connect to the internet you know, unless I'm doing some routing and et cetera from this segment, which I'm not. It is a private switch. I'll go ahead and pause while I put in a note. So in this case, what I've said is this virtual switch is used by Hyper-V to connect the virtual machines 
that I designate. Now, the reason I say that is because I may have virtual machines that I don't want to put on this lab environment. Uh, with this switch to communicate with one another while not being able to communicate out to the physical host. Now, the other great thing about this is if I'm going to use one of these for a test environment for security, for example, I want it to be autonomous. I do not want it to be able to communicate and access things. If, say, for example, I want to release ransomware onto this virtual machine, I don't want it affecting the host. In that case, I wouldn't connect it to a switch at all. Um, just to ensure that it's not going to affect any other systems on my network. And still, in that case, I'm probably going to install all of this environment onto a separate segmented machine that once I get that ransomware down, I'm disconnecting it from any network before I execute to see what that vulnerability is. All right, so enough about security. So at this point, I'll go ahead and say apply and OK. And I have those two virtual switches, the external and the internal. Now. By the way, I don't have to just use one or the other. I can actually, in my server, go ahead and connect the switch so that it can get out, get updates, etc., and then use the other switch so that the server can communicate on a separate IP segment out to the other virtual machines that are going to be part of my virtual lab. All right, so at this point, we're ready to install our first virtual machine, which we'll do in the next video. Take care.